We've gone ahead and drawn a number line to represent the situation depicted in the question. At the center of our number line, we have labeled a time equal to zero seconds. This will serve as our reference time. It will be the time that the given information is based upon. And that given information includes the acceleration and what we will call the initial velocity of 9.6 meters per second. In part A, we are asked to determine the velocity at a time of two and a half seconds earlier. And we'll notice that because the time is earlier, we're actually going to have to move to the left along our number line. Essentially, we're moving back in time. So we'll move back in time two and a half seconds. And because we are going back in time, we will let the value of time equal negative 2.5. So once we have that time in mind, we will be able to calculate a final velocity. And we can do that by employing this equation from one-dimensional kinematics. We're simply going to take the initial velocity, which again was the positive 9.6 meters per second, and then add the acceleration of 3.2 meters per second squared, multiplied by our time of negative two and a half seconds. So we will punch this into our calculators, and when we do so, we will get a final velocity of positive 1.6 meters per second. So this will be the correct answer to part A. Now, in part B, we can use the same timeline, but this time we'll be moving forward in time, two and a half seconds later. So we'll be positioning our time to the right of our reference, and we will call this positive 2.5 seconds. Again, we'll be searching for a final velocity in part B. We'll be using the same equation. So we'll come down below here, and we'll have the final velocity equals the initial of 9.6 meters per second, plus the acceleration multiplied this time by positive 2.5 seconds. So when you punch this into your calculator, you will end up with a final velocity of 17.6 meters per second. So this will be the correct answer to part B.